Hi, my name is Zoe, I'm the owner of Into the Eve and this is my first ever YouTube video. I thought for the first video it would be a good chance to tell you guys how I got into soap making and how I started the business. So let's dive in. Let's go back to when this idea first started. I was living in Australia, living life, and I discovered shampoo bars by Lush. And at this time, I don't think anyone was really doing this. I had no idea of the concept. Um, and I used them and I absolutely loved shampoo bars and I think like the entrepreneurial side of me like in my head was like oh my god this is such a good business idea um, sort of part of the idea while I was living there forgot all about it um, when I came home from Australia I was unemployed for like three months so and I just don't like I'm not the sort of person I like to sit down and just do nothing so I was like oh um okay how about <laughs> we have a look into shampoo bars and like how they're made and I don't know, just something to do with my, something to do with my time. Um, soon realised that actually really, really hard to formulate, like so hard. But on my journey of discovering shampoo bars and how they're made, I came across soap makers and I thought, oh my God, this is amazing. This looks so much fun. And they were mainly like US soap makers, but so many of the YouTube videos were just, oh my God binge worthy I couldn't stop watching um, so literally for like three months straight I was watching YouTubes every second of the day I was I bought books I was reading books they were so useful and I was basically just like trying to formulate recipes on my own like but like in written form because at this, this point I had no money so I couldn't actually experiment um, after three, three months of literally like morning to night um, doing all of this research I got a job and then with my first paycheck I bought my first lot of supplies at the time when I got all of these supplies I think Covid had just started and I was working in the bank at the time and so my hours got reduced quite a bit I had so much free time to practice and I just hyper fixated on this new hobby that I'd got I was making soup soup <laughs> I was making soap all day every day and in fact my first mold my dad actually made for me so he made me this little silicone mold for the inside and then the wooden bits which are like um what these little screws I don't know what they're called but like he made this for me um and my first ever soaps were made in this mold and I don't think I could ever throw this away it's so sentimental for me to me for me I don't know but um <laughs> My dad made it for me. It's so cute. Um, I actually might insert some pictures on the screen of my first ever soaps, but the first one that I ever made was completely naked. So no colour, no fragrance. Even though I'd done all this research, I just knew not to dive in with something too complicated because it's just silly to do that. Like, it's just silly. So I'll insert a picture here somewhere of my first ever soap, which was done in this mould. Um, the second soap I made, I decided to go with a colour and I think it was essential oil. I think it went for pink grapefruit or grapefruit. Um, and it had little like poppy seeds on the top, did a little soap top, so cute. Um, bear in mind, because I only had one mold, for the first few days I could only make like one soap a day. So first day I made naked, second day I made the grapefruit soap. The third day, I think by this point I actually got an Amazon mold. I um, can't remember why I did that, but I did. Um, I love this mold, but anyway. Yeah, the third tip I made was actually quite complicated. I just dived, I just dived in after that. And it was like a swirly soap pattern. I'll, I'll insert a picture here somewhere again. Um, but with soap making for me, I'm not gonna lie, I found it really easy from the get-go. I think because I'd absolutely crammed in so much research, I watched so many videos, when I did it, like, it was almost like I'd done it before. It was like second nature to me. I just picked it up so quickly. So even though I did a really basic soap to begin with, I was like, yeah, cool, we've done that. Let's dive in with colours, patterns, everything. And I just picked it up so quick. It was, yeah, I loved it. Talking about this now, it brings back so many memories because although I was making soap and I was like using recipes that I'd like come up with myself, um, I was testing out different colours, different fragrances, essential oils, essential oil blends, fragrance oil blends. I tried out so many milk soap recipes as well. I absolutely loved um, experimenting with milk soap. So if I can find any videos or anything on my phone, I'll try and put it on here somewhere. But I absolutely love that. Um, that is something I want to experiment again with soon actually, but loved experimenting with those. After starting to do all this experimenting, I decided it was time to start an Instagram account because the idea of making soap originated from a business idea and I was thinking if I want to turn this into a business in the future, there's no harm in starting to document the journey and just starting to get myself out there. So my Instagram account started on the 1st of May 2020. 2020? 
I'll have to double check the date. I did this last time. Um, I think 2020. Um, <laughs> and I literally just basically had the account to show pictures of what I've been making. And I made videos of every single soap I made so I didn't forget how to do, how to do the design. And I was posting them. And at this time, reels weren't a thing. So, and no one really posted videos on Instagram, to be honest. So I was posting these videos, posting photos every single day. Bear in mind, I had a lot of free time. Like, I would not be able to do that now if I was had a job and starting from scratch. Like, I had a lot of free time. So I was posting every single day and my account just took off. Um, within six months, we gained 10,000 followers. So within that time, I could see my account was going. I decided, right, Zoe, you have been experimenting for so long every single day. Like there was not a day I did not make soap or do something that wasn't like research or something to do with soap making. I was so hyper fixated and like focused on what, you know, what I was doing and had so much fun that I was like, I need to start thinking about selling. Um, now, I talk about this quite a lot on my other social platforms, but selling soap in the UK is not the case of me just making a soap and selling it. Like, there are so many legal steps involved to be able to make something and sell it in terms of cosmetics in the UK. Um, so that took quite a while to sort of get sorted. After getting all the legal bits out of the way and getting ready to sell, I started selling on the 20th of November 2020 and that week we gained our 10,000th follower on Instagram. It was such a milestone of a week, absolutely loved it, everything was like going to plan, I was on top of the world, um, but not gonna lie, and I, I'll never big this up, we hardly got any sales that first day, like I can't even remember how much it was, not much though. And Bear in mind, we had a lot of followers. That's when I really, really understood that followers don't mean sales. It's never like reflective to how many sales you get. Um, and my Instagram account, it, it was a genuine fan base. Like it was actually, a, it was a community of people. It was such a good community. Um, and even that didn't mean sales. It's, it's I, think, I think what I also realized was it's actually so hard to convince a lot of people to switch to soap bars, um, especially because our soaps are sort of aimed towards the younger audience you might say that's sort of like our target audience um it's hard when they've grown up with like squirty bottles they're easy to use you know not really too messy sometimes <laughs> um to try and switch to soap bars so that was that was really really hard so when I first started selling, I was really into using essential oils only with my soap bars, although they were colourful and fun. I think the reason for that was because friends and family, like when you when I started to tell them I was getting into soap making, they kind of just assumed in their head, oh my god, it's natural, oh essential oils, oh and I'm not gonna lie. I know that's for some people that just isn't really my vibe. Um so I think I just tried to incorporate the best that I could with my own style. So I had essential oils but with fun colours. And I'm gonna show you what some of my so first soap bars look like which we started selling because we still sell them to this day, some most of these. Um so for example, we've got Unwind, it's lemon, lavender, and eucalyptus. It's like a really relaxing, calm lavender scent. We've got patchouli and orange. Nope, that is patchouli and lime. <laughs> <laughs> we've got patchouli and orange and we've got poppy mint which is peppermint essential oil all four of these soaps we sold in our first ever launch and um, these are just four of, of the few that we sold um, and we still sell these to this day because they're still really really popular so yeah when we first started it was mainly just essential oils with fun colors and that was kind of the way for almost a year really um, moving into 2021, and um, by the way, for that first Christmas, I didn't do anything Christmas related. It was too soon for us, and I didn't have any money to put through another cosmetic assessment for a Christmas range. Um, so that, that, that just tied us into the new year, really. So after that first video going viral, and my reels just doing amazing in general, um, our, obviously our Instagram followers went up, um, website traffic went up, which obviously meant the revenue went up as well, month in, month out. Um, I think around this time as well, I posted a video on our water activated gum tape which no one was using at the time i think amazon used it which is fabulous but small businesses weren't using that so i posted a video on that um oh by this part sorry my timings are my head all over the place but by this point i think i just i literally just started posting on tiktok like just and one of my first videos was the soap scrap video which i posted months later but on tiktok which went viral and this water activated gum tape video on tiktok went viral as well and i know that a lot of big small business but now big brands on TikTok actually switched from plastic tape to our tape because of that video which is amazing that was the point of it just to educate people on a more sustainable option in terms of packaging and months after that that's when gum tape like this you know, you know how every single small business in lockdown had that um 
what's it called like the personalized gum tape for like all of their boxes that's when everyone was using it like in fact probably overusing it to be fair um and that was just like the trend so that was pretty cool to be sort of ahead of that and maybe even help educate people as well like that was that was really nice so i think i started my i might be wrong with the dates here but i'm pretty sure i started my tiktok account maybe july 21 but i wasn't really posting too much on it from from memory um and do you know what i also can't even tell you when i did my first um tiktok live but i want to say it was maybe october or november 2021 I don't know what sparked me to go live I just had a bit of intuition to do it and I remember my first ever live on TikTok um oh yeah by this point sorry I've missed so much out haven't I my timing's all over the place but by this time I'd moved out of the spare room in the house into the one of the garages downstairs because we'd blown up on Instagram orders were consistent so we had to move into a bigger place um and yet by this point, I, for my first ever live, I remember on the garage door, I put a sign on saying, please don't come in, I'm, I'm live. And I was so nervous because I didn't want my parents to come in while I was mid live and embarrass me. And I think for my first video, my first live, I'm pretty sure I was making, I don't know what kind of soap you would call it, like terrazzo soap. It's where I had these like blue and purple, like chunks of soap that I'd made and cut up and then put it into a white soap. Tell me why. I thought it was a good idea to make 200 soaps in one go on one live. <laughs> um, that, I, I started crazy. I'm still crazy. Oh my God, crazy. Um, no, I don't know. I just went for it and I, I absolutely loved it. I can't remember how many views or anything we had on that first live, but I just got a kick out of it and I just felt like, oh my God, that was, that was so good. And yeah, I just was going live on TikTok all the time after that. I think TikTok really, really, really propelled the business. Um, I think having the confidence of already having quite a big platform on Instagram, I think by that point I had like 30,000 followers maybe on Instagram, maybe more. I haven't really moved much since then, by the way, because I've not bothered adapting <laughs> my Instagram strategy. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I think the confidence of having that big platform on Instagram, coming over to TikTok, I just felt really confident. And yeah, I was just going live on TikTok all the time. Getting a workshop was a massive but relevant step for our business growth. And I remember like we, me and my mum were viewing workshops at the same time because my mum was also looking for a bigger space and we were thinking maybe a huge space that we, which we could just half for you know, each of us. And it also felt a little bit less scary for me because it would have been her name on the like rent thing as well. Um, so we were looking at workshops together for ages and nothing really hit the spot. A lot of them were dark, dingy, just too cold, like with really high ceilings, which would have cost a lot to heat. And nothing was really hitting the spot. And I was, I was looking for a good two or three months, I think, for a workshop. Um, then I started looking at smaller spaces and potentially looking for somewhere on my own and after months of looking I found this workshop here in Melton it had just come up out of nowhere it was a single unit just for me it wouldn't have been big enough for both me and my mum and I said mum I was like I'm so sorry I found somewhere it's only big enough for me but I need to go and see this it looks perfect and it was so new that I think it took like a month or so for me to actually get the first viewing came here came round, looked around the whole workshop and i just looked at her mum and she looked at me and i was like this is it mum this is this is the workshop and i think it was a little bit more than i was expecting to pay but i was like this is it, it it's, it's literally perfect i can't and even my mum was like yeah that's fair enough the only problem is this workshop is like 35 40 minutes from my house <laughs> um but I kind of weighed up the pros and cons and I was like, I've got to do it. It's perfect. It, everything just felt right. So I said, yes, 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 let's do this. Um, and I remember, I remember having to work really hard. Like I think, I can't remember how much it was for the deposit, but it was a lot of money, which I just didn't have. So I went live and live and live and live. I went live so much uh, within a week, just make this money up, which is mad to say that I could even just do that. But yeah, within a week or something, I think I made the deposit for the workshop and I got it um and yeah oh my gosh it was amazing when i first moved in this place felt so empty it was crazy but i didn't feel scared like I, it was filled with hopes and promises like it sounds so cringe but i could just i could envision what i wanted out of this space and it felt really empty like i, I had to find some photos i had to insert them here somewhere of like, what it first looked like when we first got here and what it looked like with all the stuff that i had had for my old workshop in this place and how small it all looked um but yeah, I don't know, it was just, it was, no, no, daunting isn't the word. It was exciting. No one ever tells you, but like when you go from having a job to 
having a small, small business to having a work facility, like an actual workspace, which you actually dr have to drive to every single day, how hard it is to find your like new work routine. I really, really struggled with that because it was almost like I had too much freedom. It was like, do I need to come to work today? How long do I need to come to work for? How long do I need to be here? Because some days I had nothing to do. Like I didn't, I ran out of supplies. I couldn't make anything. Like there's only so much soap you can make before you have too much that you can't sell it. So I'd, some days I'd be like, oh, I don't even know what to do today. I'd just be sat here like scrolling on my phone, but just in the workshop. That was pretty weird. And that wasn't really something I was prepared for. It took, it took me a long time. I would probably say at least six months to really find, my, probably more than that actually. But like, it took me a long time to find an actual work balance for me. Now, at the time I get in the workshop, I was seeing my friend Sarah every so often for a coffee. We weren't even good mates, to be honest. We'd even say this now, we just weren't. We, just, we were just friends that we used to, basically me and Sarah used to work together as a swimming teacher and lifeguard at a local pool. And when I came up from Australia, I decided to sort of meet up with her every sort of, not even six months, like probably more than that, um, for a coffee. And around the time I was getting the workshop, she sort of said to me, look, potentially looking for a new job. And I was like, hey, do you want a new job with me? <laughs> and we were like, oh my God, yes. So I hired Sarah full time, um, not long after getting the workshop, I think like a month after it was in May, I think June 20, sorry, May 22, I think. Um, and I hired her full time. And I even remember now, like when she first started, <laughs> I needed her to be here, but I didn't need her here full time. And like some days she would be here, and we'd just, she'd be like, okay, what do you want me to do? And I'd be like, I don't actually know. Um, just go on your phone for a bit. I don't know, I had to think. <laughs> like a few hours would pass, pass and I'd be like, hey, do you wanna do this? Um, and when she first started, I'd, oh my God, that was so funny to think back on. Um, but so when she first started, she was crucial really because she helped with making the products, um, emails. She mainly did the jobs that I didn't wanna do. So like all the things that I couldn't do on myself anymore, like there was just too much to do, like making the products. Um, so she helped a lot with the admin, which took a, lot, a massive weight. So I had this idea of potentially hiring someone um, to go live on TikTok for me. I know it would have been weird and a big shock to the system for everyone because they used to see my face, but that was the idea that I had. Um, and it got quite serious. So I was telling viewers, oh my God, I might be doing this. But then I got a little bit scared about hiring someone and entrusting them with the business and going live and being in the front of the business for five weeks while I was away. So I decided not to do that. Anyway, we're on the holiday. I was going live on holiday in Australia. I was literally waking up at like 4 a.m. to go live at like 5 a.m. or whatever it was to be live for you guys here because I had to make money. Like we probably would have survived, but five weeks we were not going live, that would have been hard because I had three staff members to pay for, rent, outgoings. Um, there's a, I actually quite a lot of pressure actually to do that, but I was going live all the time. Um, on my holiday <laughs> even though i'd just been on a holiday and i was working i came back so recharged like i think like three weeks into the holiday i was like oh i love this like I, I was in like perth or something like oh my god it was so beautiful but i was like get me home like the creativityness in me which is i wanted to get back to soap making i really really missed it and obviously i enjoyed my holiday and i uh, i what's the word um i appreciated it while i was there i was itching to come home so when i came back I went for it. I was making every single day. I was making loads of videos. I was posting a lot more on TikTok. And yeah, our sales went through the roof again. Now, because I came back and I was feeling refreshed and energized and excited, and I was getting back into the swing of things, loving life, I could see things a lot clearer. And I thought, do you know what? I now feel really confident to actually hire for this live presenter role. Um, so, we hired Tori and Ashton, I think it was May or June 2023, to go live on TikTok all the time. We soon realised, actually, we probably don't need them full time to do that um, because they get sick because they're live all day. They're sh I don't know, me and Tori anyway. <laughs> we end up getting so excited that we kind of like shout at the camera and then like they would lose their voice and get a little bit sick. Um, also, going live that much, yes, to be fair, we did get more sales. It just wasn't as special as it would be if we just did a condensed live in the evening. So I realized very, very quickly that I actually didn't need them full time. Um, so I'm an optimism, optimistic person. <laughs> um, I actually decided, okay, right. So don't need them full time. How can we make the most of them being here to help the business that isn't live? Okay, well, I really struggle being a consistent like posting on socials, let's get them to help me with that. I need help with email marketing, Pinterest, all the platforms that I hadn't yet ventured into, but I wanted to get into YouTube now, Ashton's helping us with this. Um, and they have been absolutely amazing. And we now, I now have all this extra help with marketing because at the end of the day, we 
don't do ads at the minute. Um, we everything's organic. I just need that extra bit of help sometimes, you know, to market when um, market without all being my energy and time. To be honest, that pretty much brings us back to now, January 2024. Um, I don't really think there's much more to add. <laughs> Never me, I'll end up remembering loads of things that I've missed out and maybe I can make like a part two or something in the future if I remember anything. Um, but yeah, that's all I can think about. Thank you so much for watching my first ever YouTube video. Um, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And also, if you really, really like what you watched, go on and join us on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Pinterest, all the platforms and come and say hi.